Hi guys, how are you? I am absolutely wonderful. Getting ready to make something snacky. I haven't made any of these in a long time. And I'm overdue. So I'm going to show you how to make some amazing granola bars that you can make at home so much cheaper and so much healthier than the store-bought yuck. So, yeah, totally. Thinking about your budget, I mean, let's face it, everybody's grocery budget has gone through the roof. So, thinking about ways to save a little money, um, even buying in bulk, if you buy the big box of granola bars, you're still gonna spend a lot more than you normally would if you were gonna make your own with this little doohickey right here. This is our snack bar maker. And it is a two piece, um, has a lid that goes right on top. Of course I just washed it, so it's a little cool. One side's cool and one side's not. So the lid goes right on top. So you can actually make bars like yogurt bars, put it, cover it and put it right in the fridge or in the freezer, let them freeze completely and then take them out. Um, or the bottom part, you put it right in the oven, right on the rack and you bake your granola bars. And these are nice size bars. These are about an inch and a half, well, about an inch and a half by four inches. So maybe a little bit shorter than that, um, that name brand granola bar, just barely a little shorter. But I'm gonna show you how to do it so easy and so inexpensively, okay? All you're gonna do is think about what you like in a granola bar, whether we know it's oats, right? It's gonna be oats. And then what are your add-ins gonna be, right? If you want nuts, what kind of nuts? Do you want dried fruit? Do you want craisins or raisins or dried pineapple or what the, whatever the case may be, you can add whatever you want in here and it's gonna come out amazing. And you're gonna have a snack that you feel good about. You're not gonna have all the preservatives and everything else that are added into those other granola bars to keep them fresh, to give them a really, really super, super long shelf life. So. Let's get started. I already got my oats measured out, and this recipe is one of the Pampered Chef recipes. It calls for a cup and a half of oats. So I've already got those measured out. Now I've decided that I wanted to do dates and coconut. So I've got some medjool dates that I just chopped up. Um, these are whole dates. I just took the seeds out, took the little caps off, sliced them, and then just chopped them up into about a little less than a quarter inch dice. So we're gonna pop those in there. Um, I've got some raisins, I've got coconut, a little bit of brown sugar, some uh, sunflower seeds, oh my gosh, I almost said sesame seeds, sunflower seeds. I've got some flaxseed meal because I like the flavor that flaxseed meal gives things and plus it's a great source of fiber. So we're getting fiber in our oats, but we're also gonna use a little bit of flaxseed meal. Plus, I'm gonna add a little bit of our pea protein in there and yes, this is not in the bag because I broke the zipper on my bag, so I just keep it in a jar. I use it so much, I just keep it in a jar. It's so much easier. And then I'm gonna little add just a tad bit of our honey. So one and a half cup of oats. To that, I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of baking soda. Oh, I saw a really cool meme the other day. It was so cute. Do you know how to tell when your baking soda is bad? If it says a block, if it's got a blockbuster ad on it, it's bad. <laughs> Those of you who are too young to know blockbuster, <laughs> Casey might know. Hi, Casey. How are you? You might remember blockbuster. I don't know. That may be a bit a stretch for you, hon. Huh? All right. So I'm just going to toss that around with the oats. Okay. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add all of my add-ins to one cup measuring cup because you you don't want to do more than that because then you throw off the ratio of the add-ins to the oats and it just doesn't hold together well so we're going to add in up to a cup and i know i definitely want these dates so i'm going to put all of these dates in okay kind of spread them all out they're really really super sticky and then i'm going to add about Let's do maybe a tablespoon and a half 
of sunflower seeds. I'm going to do a good couple of tablespoons of coconut because I love coconut. Maybe two and a half tablespoons of coconut. Okay. And then this is where flaxseed meal next. Flaxseed meal, you can't go wrong. It's really yummy. So I'm just going to do one tablespoon. I still got a lot of air space in between all those hunks of um, dates. And we're gonna add some of our raisins. Oops, it is scuffed. I think I get a little bit more room. All right, now I'm gonna add just a little bit of the enrichables. I'm gonna put the enrichables right in with the oats so that it disperses easy. See, I've already gone through almost another bag of this. I use it in all my soups. I use it in um, stews, granola bars, smoothies, things like that. I'm gonna put two scoops in here because this is gonna make 12 granola bars. All right, so two scoops. Now I've got my oven preheating to 350 degrees, so. It'll be nice and hot by the time we get all this done. So just stir this around a little bit. Okay, so the other thing it's gonna call for is two tablespoons of melted butter. Now you can use butter, you can use coconut oil, you can use vegan butter, whatever your heart desires, but you do need something in there to help, you know, make this all kind of stick together. So I'm gonna dump in all of my, all of my add-ins. Yep, see, my oven's ready, look at that. Timing. I'm just gonna toss these around a little bit because I wanna keep those dates a little separated and the, um, the oats and the protein powder is gonna help that happen. So I'm just gonna mush that around a little bit just to help get that separated. Now, you can add chocolate chips to your granola bar, but just a word of advice, um, top your granola bars after they're baked with your chocolate chips. I found that if you mix it in with the granola, they don't hold together very well. So yeah, there is that. They kind of a gooeyness. They're still fun to eat and they still taste good. Okay, so those are broken up pretty good. There's a couple little pieces there. Break that up. All right, now, so we're gonna add our butter, our butter and our honey. So I've melted our butter in this cute little pan here. Got it a little warm, but that's okay. This is vegan butter. So we're, really it's mostly coconut oil based. And the next thing is a quarter of a cup of honey. Now because I've got a little brown sugar in here too, even though you're adding a quarter cup of honey, it's still not as much sugar as you might think. So I think we're still gonna be okay. I'm gonna go a scant quarter cup though. There we go. Like I said, you can add all kinds of things. I've done chia seeds, toasted chia seeds. Yeah, make sure you toast them first because if you don't, they don't quite react as well. So, but if you do toasted chia seeds, they are so good, so very good get all this stuff out of the way. Now I'm going to use my heavy scraper here. There we go. And I'm just going to toss all this yumminess together. Um, you can add cinnamon. We have a really yummy um, cinnamon plus. It only, is come, it only comes out at Christmas. So that and our Karinji cinnamon is absolutely amazing. But you can only get it at Christmas. And if you miss it, you miss it. But you can use whatever spice one you want to. I've heard people putting a little bit of cayenne in here to give it a, just a little bit of kick, especially when they use dark chocolate. And dark chocolate and cayenne pepper is really, really good. All right, so we're doing pretty good here. There's still a little bit of loose stuff. I'm going to press that in a little bit. See how that mixture is? It's just, it's not 
gooey sticky, but it's just enough to help it hold together. And then when it bakes, um, the sugar is gonna caramelize a little bit and it's gonna stick everything together nicely. There we go, I think we're good. Oh, that smells so good, that smells so good. All right, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna scoot this out a little bit. I'm gonna take our snack bar maker. I'm gonna use the medium scoop and I'm gonna start plopping in there as much as possible. And depending upon your add-ins, I will tell you, I made this one time and it came out great. The next time I made it, I got a little overzealous with the add-ins and had more stuff than I had wells for. And I kind of knew then it wasn't gonna come out right out of the, the molds very well. It did okay though, but it still was a little loosey-goosey. So we're gonna top those off a little bit when we get a base in here. And don't worry about if you get some down in the little holes. Those are the, um, for the lid. The lid has little pegs that fit down in those holes so it stays closed when you have them in the refrigerator. Let's say you take them out of the oven and you don't have time to deal with them right away. You can just loosen them once they cool a little bit, loosen them up a little bit, and then you just put the lid on once they're cool and walk away from it. You can leave them at room temperature or you can pop them in the fridge. Oops. This smells so good, the dates and the honey. And I didn't even put cinnamon or anything because I'm like, you know what? I got enough flavor from the dates. I don't think I'm gonna need it. I don't wanna overpower that coconut. You can use unsweetened coconut, sweetened coconut, whatever your heart desires. Now I'm gonna take my nylon serving spatula and I'm gonna go back over these and I'm gonna press to try to get it compacted as much as I can so I can get everything in these wells. And then once it's where I like it, and it's as full as I like, then I'm gonna pop them in the oven and they're not gonna to take too long. They're gonna bake for about 14 to 16 minutes, and that's it. So if you had a couple of these, especially if you got kids, somebody likes granola bars, somebody else likes yogurt bars, you can make one in the freezer with the yogurt bars and one in the oven with the granola bars, and then everybody's happy. Okay, so let's, let's get our spatula out here. I'm just gonna press, and look at that, it fits right down in those wells, just perfect. So I'm just gonna press a little bit. Don't worry if it sticks, just slide it right off. That honey is gonna stick to the spatula and that's fine. Don't worry about a thing. Push it in there, wiggle around a little bit, slide it off. Add a little bit more where you need to, take out where you need to. It's all good. And you know, even with kids, this can be fun. I know it's a, probably a little messy, but still, it would be a lot of fun. So make some snack bars next time your grands come up. You know, they pop in for a visit or for a, a weekend. So, <clears throat> so their mom and dad can have a little date night, whatever. You can make some granola bars or some yogurt bars. There's recipes on our website. So there are milk and cereal bars, which uses like Cheerios or uh, Odeos or whatever you want to call them. I don't know what they're called. We don't buy cereals. So. <laughs> but you can make it with all kinds. Somebody else um, that I knew in one of our groups, our Facebook groups, used Cap'n Crunch. Yeah. Milk and cereal bars, Cap'n Crunch cereal. Peanut butter Cap'n Crunch. <laughs> that, when I was growing up, used to be one of my favorites. Oh my gosh, it was terrible. I could I could blow through a box. I love Cap'n Crunch with peanut butter. So, the others were okay, but I'm a peanut butter fan, so it was all peanut butter. All right. I'm going to top a couple of these off a little bit. Now, if it starts sticking too bad, you can always just wet your fingers a little bit 
uh, with a little bit of water and then it will not stick quite as bad. But it also depends upon what you put in there. Dates are really sticky, honey is really sticky. Um, I wanted to make sure that these were really gonna stay together well. I don't want them to fall apart. You know how some of those granola bars, the store-bought granola bars, the minute you take a bite, it's like they shatter and they go everywhere? I don't like that. <laughs> I like them to kind of stick together a little bit. So I'm gonna press that down and you're gonna get it everywhere and that's okay. That's quite all right. So I see even this recipe with just the add-ins, just the one cup of add-ins that I had, it's still, it kind of, it's pretty full. It's pretty full. I might be able to eke a little bit here. And you can do all kinds of different flavors. You can add peanut butter. If you wanted to do peanut butter instead of your um, honey, heat up your peanut butter in the microwave if you have a microwave. I don't have a microwave. So <laughs> you heat it up on the, in a pan on the stove and use melted peanut butter instead of honey. That would be yummy. Okay. All right, so I think we are about as packed in there as we're gonna get. Oh, let me get this one a little bit. All right. Oops, get out of there. All right, let me wash my hands real quick. We're gonna pop that in the oven. It's gonna go in for about 14 to 18 minutes. It's not gonna take any time at all. And then you just wanna leave it set for just a few minutes to cool before you pop them out. And then once you pop them out, you can wrap them up in uh, wax paper or plastic wrap, whatever you prefer. I did make quite a bit of a mess. That's what I get for talk. I'm not looking while I'm doing it. I make a mess. All right, so let's go ahead and pop this in the oven. And you can put it just like this. You don't have to worry about putting a tray under or anything with a cookie sheet. Just pop it right in there. And set your timer I'm gonna set it for 15 because I want to check it at 15 and if I think it needs to stay in a little bit longer I'll do a couple more minutes and that'll be it and that is how easy it is to make a fantastic granola bar um, snack bar so what would you do what kind of what kind of add-ins would you prefer comment below Hey, Tony, if you're still here, Karen, awesome, awesome. All right, so super, super easy to do, and uh, you can make it to your preference. It's very versatile. Um, let's see, chocolate bars. I have made some amazing, you know, three chocolate chocolate bars, kind of like a gourmet chocolate bar, uh, for making s'mores, yeah. Um, you can use it for making, um, almond bark or like almond, you know, chocolate bars or what have you. Um, there's been people who have sandwiched them together, uh, make cookie bars and then sandwiched together to make these little cool like mini faux ice cream sandwiches but with cookie and icing. So there's all kinds of things that you can do with the snack bar maker. So I'm gonna let these cook and then I'm gonna take a picture and I'll show you exactly how they are when they come out. And if you wanna try it, Give me a shout and I'll get you all hooked up and I'll even talk you through making them. It's so easy. So easy. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Got to clean up my mess, get the dishwasher going, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.